This year, at SparkFun's Autonomous Vehicle Competition, we'll be hosting our own combat bots, where you get to watch some vicious robot-on-robot -robot destruction. In addition to the larger 12 and 30 pound robots, we also have a division for one pound robots, which includes robots made mostly out of plastic, which we'll call plastic ants. And to help you get a head start on building your own plastic ants, I've got Jamie Lieben here with me today, who is president of IT Works and helps run the Loveland Creator Space. So Jamie, what can you tell us about these plastic ants? So plastic ants are the name for a class of combat robots that have a weight limit of one pound and their chassis and weapons are 3D printed. The plastic ants are really accessible from a cost and uh, creation standpoint. You don't need access to a machine shop, you just need a 3D printer. You don't even need to have CAD skills. You can d download the design that someone else has made and 3D print yourself. You could also modify someone else's design. The plastic ants are much more accessible for an education environment because the energies are lower, so with just basic safety equipment, you could probably fight them in a school gymnasium as well. Right, and to be honest, I've never built my own combat bot, but I've seen a few episodes of BattleBots. So can you tell us a little bit about the design types, like my favorite, Poison Arrow? Yeah, so Loveland Creator Space is home for Poison Arrow, which is a 250 pound combat robot that made it to the final eight on BattleBots. It has one of the all time greatest hits on BattleBots where it flung another 250 pound bot 30 feet across the arena, that's what's called a drum spinner. It's got a drum that spins uh, backwards, kind of like a, va or a vacuum cleaner has, uh, that's attempting to get under, lift, and launch the other bot, and then let gravity do the rest. Now, those 200-pound bots are at you know, one end of the competition spectrum, uh, whereas a plastic ant would be uh, at the other. There are even smaller uh, weight classes as well, but the one pound is what we're really looking forward to at ABC. So some of the basic classes of bot designs, the simplest is a wedge or a rammer where you have a web shaped bot or a bot with a vertical front that's just trying to get under and push around or slam into another bot. Uh, SparkFun ABC does allow those designs, but definitely check the rules for other competitions because many competitions don't allow bots like these where they don't have an active weapon. Mainly because they can be boring. If you just have two bots pushing each other around, it's no fun. The ABC, the one pound bots do have an arena with hazards, so you can shove the other one into the hazards and, and get some good destruction that way. Moving up in complexity, there's the lifter bot where you have a lever of some kind that moves uh, and a chassis that drives around to support it. Uh, my bot here, No Step on Snake, is a lifter. Competed in a recent uh, competition against metal bots and always left on its own power because the other robot drivers were generous. But uh, that's a nice design. Some bots can't drive upside down, so if you have a lever and can flip them over, that disables them and you win the competition. A little more complexity, a little more weight. Next uh, up in complexity and additional weight is the horizontal spinner, where you have a blade or a disc or a bar that has a vertical axis that spins around. Uh, they can be on the floor, what they call an undercutter or kind of a mid-cutter design. Um, these are, you know, again, more weight, more complexity, and uh, do have some gyroscopic effects. A variant of the horizontal spinner is what's called a shell spinner or a full body spinner, where you have a cover that spins around the chassis, uh, and that cover usually has weapons around the outside. That one, uh, you do need to make sure you have a way of telling which way is facing front on that bot, otherwise it's kind of hard to drive it around. And then there are vertical spinners where you have a disc or a blade or a bar like uh, I'm working on here with the plastic ant um, or the drum spinner like Poison Arrow where you have a drum that's spinning on a horizontal axis. The idea here is to get under the other bot, flip them up in the air and let gravity do the rest. And the last class I could think of is a clamper where you have a jaw that closes on the other bot allowing you to drive it around the arena into hazards or smash it into the wall. There are other names for a lot of these bots, but those are kind of the classes that they all fall into primarily. This is great, Jamie. So can you give us some information about how you might print these out of plastic instead of milling it out of steel? Yeah, so plastic ants are really nice because they can be iterated. 
and modified and you know customized as you need. Some things that I've made mistakes on that might help you are first of all start with your hard parts the motors the receiver the battery package them as close together as you can and then design the chassis around that uh, makes it more compact which saves on weight that one pound limit is a pretty difficult one to hit. Uh, another tip I printed all of these on the Lulzbot Mini, which has a six inch cubic build volume. If your bot has a chassis that's going to be larger than the Mini can handle, it's gonna to be too heavy. So keep it small, keep it compact. Uh, Lulzbot Mini is a great choice for making these. Good deal. This has been absolutely wonderful. So thank you for letting us uh, show off your bots and answer a few questions and hopefully give some people some information about how to build their own. If you're looking to compete and build your own, definitely check out SparkFun's rules and regulations and registration on avc.sparkfun.com. AVC comes October 14th and 15th. Happy hacking.